I'm Laura Craigs. I am a CPA and I am an assistant auditor level three with the Ohio Auditor of State's office. So for breaking that down into level of what I actually am, I am a staff level three. The next step up for me would be management. Um, but the state auditor, you think I'm coming to you live from Columbus, Ohio. I am actually in Toledo. So my area is the Northwest region and I audit anything in Lucas or Henry County. Okay, very good. And you've got one of those, um, those numeric elevations, that's government, that's government language, right? Um, kind of, there's some staff levels, uh, one and two. I think some of my friends have those and they're, um, a lot of my friends are actually in industry but the ones in public accounting, I think they have like a staff one or two type of thing. Okay, all right. Well, how about a, a snapshot of your career path? So for my career path, I started out in accounting at UT. I actually thought I was gonna go into big four. So if you're in accounting, you know, we have four large accounting firms. Um, and I thought I was gonna go and do something there, probably tax, because that's what you do if you get, your accounting degree, you get your CPA, you go be a tax accountant at a big four firm. <laughs> um, so I got all the grades, I did everything you're supposed to do, joined clubs, got leadership positions in those clubs. I had my first internship in individual tax my junior year and I really enjoyed it. And then I took the individual income tax class and I loved it, that was a great class. And then I went back to a second internship with the same firm and I really thought about what I was doing there. And I decided it really wasn't something I wanted to do every day. Um, I really like tax. I think individual tax is very interesting, but I really like the financial aspect of accounting. So there's a couple sides of accounting that you start kind of getting into in college. You go uh, tax or financial and I just really liked financial better. So I finished out college with what we call the victory lap, because I did two busy season internships, so I had two springs off. And then I added a master's degree on top of that. So I had two offers, both in audit actually, when I went to graduate. And they were with Sherwin-Williams or the state of Ohio. And either of them would have been great jobs. Both of them are, are fun in their own different ways, but ultimately I went with the state. Okay, well, what influenced that decision? Um, well, I kind of broke that down into three steps. So what influenced accounting in the first place? I went to a high school that offered accounting and I took it because it sounded different and fun. My sister went into hard sciences and I knew that was not going to be my direction. So I figured I should explore my options while they didn't have the college price tag on them. <laughs> so the next one, I went to audit um, and I tried tax. I realized I really like the individual. I hate anything that has corporate, partnership, LLC, any of that tax in the name, it's not for me. So since I really always love financial side, in high school, I actually placed second in the state for fundamental accounting because we did accounting competitions, which everyone is probably thinking those are a blast and they actually were. <laughs> Yeah, they were super fun. You go and you take accounting tests. What's more fun than that? Um, so I was second in the state there. And then I tutored financial accounting actually in the Allen Berry Accounting Lab for many years in college. <laughs> so it was all right in front of me. I just never saw it until my master's year apparently. Um, and then government. So there's actually a bunch of different places you guys can work in accounting. Um, you don't really see this a lot in college because you say you get your CPA, you go work for a big four and you're going to do tax or audit. But actually those sections can break down even further. So you can do industry, um, you can do public, or I went to the government. So I really liked the idea of working to make something better. And civil service just felt like the right call for me. So when I said both offers would have been great jobs, I really, really mean it. Sherwin Williams would have been amazing. They would just go to somewhere in the country and you just audit and you audit stores. And I was in retail in college and I really enjoyed retail. So I had a really good grasp on retail auditing, what you're going to need to do. Um, 
But ultimately, I sat in my graduate assistant advisor's office, which is uh, Dr. Franz's office, and we made a pros and cons list of why both jobs would be good and why both jobs might not be so good. And eventually, we were just sitting there looking at this list, and she said, well, it really sounds like you want to work for the state. And I said, I think you're right. <laughs> so that's kind of how I got into like what influenced me, Dr. Franz kind of influenced me definitely to take this job. Okay, all right. So something very elementary, a, a pros and cons list. I mean, you don't even need software for that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> boom, 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 yellow legal pad and go with it. Okay, mm -hmm. um, you, you did the, the tutoring in the, the Berry Lab. Um, what other things did you do in, in college to help prepare you for this? So my freshman year, I started out, and you kind of do like what every second child does. You look at what your older sibling did, and you say, that worked for them, <laughs> which we'd already figured out hard sciences was not an option for me. So at least we got that cut out. Well, she joined UT Bash, the gaming club. So my freshman year, I started out, and I said, OK, I guess I'll go join the gaming club, because at least I'll know one person on this entire campus of like 20,000 kids. And I know my sister will be there. So that's one person. So I joined them my freshman year. And my second year, I became the treasurer. So I started getting my leadership experience pretty quickly. Um, so they do something in their officership. They have a primary officer and a secondary officer that the secondary officer goes and helps out when the primary can't make a meeting. They have like a late class or had to work or something. So I started out as his second and then I became the treasurer. And that organization at the time, they had discovered that accounting majors were the thing. Like you get an accounting major, you put them as treasurer and it's good. <laughs> so they found out I was in accounting and they're like, well, great, learn everything about being the treasurer. So I had that position until I think my fourth year of undergrad. Since I did the victory lap, I kind of measure in years, not like freshman, sophomore. <laughs> um, and then my fifth year, I trained the guy who took over for me actually as treasurer, which he is actually starting at my job on Monday. <laughs> so I get to train him. Um, and then the other major club that I was in was Beta Alpha Psi, which if you're an accounting student, you need to be in Beta Alpha Psi. Um, their meetings are, they're all professional meetings. So you wear your business attire for all of them, but they have meetings with companies. So Gilmore, Jason Myler will come in, Plant Moran will come in, we've had PwC. They all just come in, they talk to you about their firm, kind of what they look for in their hires. And it's, an invaluable experience. They also do an event called Meet the Firms, which they describe as speed dating, but for firms. <laughs> um, and it's very helpful. It's just another thing that gets you meeting these firms before the job fair. I think we interacted with firms at least three times, I want to say, before the job fair. And it was great because when you hit the job fair and you see a hundred plus companies just standing there waiting to talk to you. You walk in, you're like, oh my, what do we do? Where do we start? But you already know these people, so it's great. Um, college of Business offers a lot of opportunities. So if you just get out there, take advantage of those opportunities and meet people, you do the mock interviews or Amy's class is also invaluable if you just put the time in and do the work. <laughs> Like, I know a lot of people say that, but it's true because it gets you actually doing the mock interviews. Um, Beta Office I will get you going to etiquette dinner. So they'll teach you how to eat and talk to people at the same time without making a huge mess. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just take advantage of all the opportunities that school has. That's the big word, opportunity. Seize yes. It. Yeah. Um, what kind of person uh, should go into accounting, like values and interests, skills, personal qualities, that kind of thing? Or maybe, maybe you can't put a label on that, but rather for yourself, perhaps. We generally like to see people with a lot of attention to detail. Um, in audit, we have this lovely thing called the materiality threshold. But if it's over materiality, you need to investigate it. You need to understand why it is and what it does. 
So you need some attention to detail because sometimes the finer points like, okay, you collect a utility bill and you're like, okay, big picture, that's pretty easy. Sometimes the finer points of that utility bill collection system are really hard. <laughs> um, so you need attention to detail, really know your process and what's going on in it. Time management skills are a must because a lot of times, especially with now, um, when we're all working remotely, you need to, we have set jobs we need to get done on a day and you need to be able to manage your time to get it done because the thing about working for the government is we don't work past five. <laughs> So that's kind of like a general thing of what we say, but we actually have, you can't start before 6 a.m. and you can't work after 6 p.m. So they kind of, they make sure that you are getting paid fairly for what you do. And you need to be able to manage your time to get all of your jobs done in that time period. You also need, and I know you think that this is totally wrong because you're accountants, you're all accountants, you're just gonna sit in your desk and you're not gonna talk to anyone ever. That is so not true. You need great people skills in this job because we go to client sites all the time and you talk to people and people are more willing to talk to you and explain their process and just tell you things like things that are good, things that aren't so good, if you're friendly and you can communicate with them. And especially now where we're doing everything so remotely, you have to be able to communicate what you need to people efficiently or else everyone's going to be spending forever looking for the wrong document. And you need some good work ethic because you, a lot of times when you're out in the field, you actually manage your own stuff. So you need to make sure that you're getting things done. So you need a good work ethic. And it's really silly. You always think this is the silliest thing an auto professor will tell you. You need to have a questioning mind. Ever, it's a very silly thing that they always tell you in school and you're like, that is so funny. That's not applicable whatsoever. That can't be applicable in the field. It is so true because when you go out in the field and you ask about a process, you say, okay, but why? And there's always this little audit slide that Dr. Franz had all the time. And there's just this little guy on it and just had a question bubble and said, why? And that is the best way you actually get some of your explanations is somebody tells you something and you say, but why would you do that? And then they go further into it. And then later you can find out like, is that actually efficient? Should you make process changes? Anything like that. So those are kind of the things you need to be an auditor. Um, I don't really know so much about the tax side anymore. <laughs> That's okay. Um so that age old question that every two and three year old asks from the start, if you, if you continue to ask those questions, you might be cut out for audit, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what kind of uh, current events impact your work? Current events are relevant all over in my work. So it's not just COVID-19 in general, you always need to monitor the new situation because you need to find out if somebody has a levy coming up, that actually could impact. Um, it's actually a financial reporting risk. If somebody has a levy coming up, they might be trying to look like they really, really need the levy, or they might be showing some other things. So it's always need to know, does somebody have a levy on the ballot? Who is getting grant money? Um, in the blade a few weeks ago, the Port Authority, they had this article, Port Authority is getting a bunch of grant money. Okay, well now we know that they're definitely gonna be a single audit filer for the federal government. <laughs> and if we go in there and do their audit, we need, we need to know this stuff because doing federal testing is a big time commitment actually on an audit because the federal government has a lot of specific things they need you to look for. Um, and then we also, you just need to know what's going on in a general economic sense with your area um, because that's going to impact how all the governments react to it. So uh, it, things as simple as City of Toledo's issue one with the filling the potholes and doing the roads. We need to know about that because there's a bunch of other things that kind of go into, you know, doing levies, paving roads, all these things. Um, so I have a subscription personally to the Toledo Blade because I get a lot of, I do Lucas and Henry County. The Blade's the largest reporter in this area. 
So I get, I learn a lot about my clients in that paper. There was one time I was about to leave a client site. It was my second to last day there. We were filling out all the steps to finish their audit. And all of a sudden, front page, second section hits. And there, I heard some mumblings about it. And then I went and I looked and I called my husband. And I said, send me a picture of the front page of the second section today. Because I hadn't had a chance to read it. There, there my client was, front and center. And I've got to say, we're going to have to change some stuff of how we close your audit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, so you just always need to know what's going on in your area. Um, and that kind of impacts with what we do right now. Um, we were looking to start our health department audits. <laughs> we are not looking to start our health department audits as voraciously as we were before <laughs> because they have a lot going on. So it, when COVID-19 hit, um, we had some changes with that. Uh, my office has always been fortunate enough. We were able to do remote work location because with auditors, the great thing about this job is you go site to site. So I don't go to an office every day. I go to an office most days for six months of the year because I handle a large client, but we don't really go to the same place every day. So since we're always picking up sites and moving, we were already pretty movable. We have a way to get into all of our stuff and access whatever we need to to work from wherever. Some of the other state agencies were not as lucky and they deal with highly sensitive information. The state was not comfortable with letting go to uh, remote access and they had some issues getting servers capable of running this stuff securely for the state's desire. Um, so we were lucky in that sense. COVID-19 hasn't really impacted how I work greatly. It's just the biggest thing is planning your work because we now need to plan to have work for six weeks. Instead of usually we only planned out like two to three on like a staff side level. And the managers were the ones planning out in the long term, but now the staff is starting to plan out in the longer term. And my audit manager is having to look even further than we are out just to make sure everyone still has work so that we can keep working and getting paid. All right. Um, pretty much coming to a close now. Any other advice you care to offer? My large ones, I think I already covered, was you need to get involved. Definitely be involved on campus. Take advantage of all the opportunities College of Business and the university offers you. Um, if you're an accounting student, you need to join Beta Alpha Psi. It's an invaluable experience. They help you out with so much. Um, just elevator pitches, talking to people at job fairs, meeting people before the job fair. Um, if you're kind of shy, like I am, and you didn't really like meeting too many new people, that will help you. <laughs> um, you need to take advantage of any of the networking events the university offers or try to. I didn't do a lot of networking events because there were a good amount of them that were marketing. I'm not really a marketing person, so, but find the ones that are relevant to you and do those networking events. Definitely do mock interviews because by the time you're done doing mock interviews and all these other interviews that Amy has you do, you're going to be so comfortable with interviewing. It's not even going to matter to you. You're going to say, oh, okay, an interview. I know I need to prep these things. These are the questions that I kind of need to have answers for because you don't want to get asked a question in an interview and then sit there and go, let me think about that for a few minutes. Yeah. Um, what is my strongest personality trait? So yeah, just mock interviews, all that stuff very much helps. And then, you know, going to the etiquette dinner when you're in beta, that will help you. And the job fair. The job fair is very helpful, but don't just go to the job fair. I know they always send out all those little memos and PDFs about how to work a job fair. Follow that advice, please. <laughs> um, because I, I too go to the job fair actually still for UT. And I really don't like when people come up and I have the nice auditor of state tablecloth behind me and all this stuff. And you say, so what does the auditor of state do? Like kind of just know a general sense of what the companies that you're gonna talk to 
do. Um, it sounds kind of basic, but we don't really like getting asked, you know, tell me about yourself. Generally, that's our interview question. <laughs> um, and then good grades are important. It shows us that you know what we're talking about, but involvement's also very important because that shows that you know how to conduct yourself someplace. And internships are super important because those show us that you know how to work in a professional level environment. So definitely do some internships, at least one, just to kind of, not even just to get your foot in the door with a company, that will definitely help you, but to get the experience, any sort of experience and professional experience when you're going through to do a job interview, and then you can take those skills that you learned and apply it to any of the questions that they've asked you, because that's what we're looking for in an interview. If we ask you a question, apply what you've learned either at your college job or in your internships or somewhere in school. Tell us an application of where you use the skills. My last one, which my husband so kindly reminded me of today, was do not pigeonhole yourself. So you're an accounting student. You're gonna get your accounting degree, get your 150 to sit for your CPA. You will then get your CPA and then you're gonna go work for the big four. Or you could start with big four and get your CPA, either one. But know that there are a lot of options if you're an accounting student. You can do tax or audit as our big breakdown is how we work it. But from there, you can go into internal audit, you can get a certification in internal auditing, certification in management accounting, um, fraud investigator is a certification. There are so many different areas you can explore in accounting. It's not just do tax, do audit. We have information system auditors at the state. They only come in and they audit information systems for us. So know that. Don't pigeonhole yourself and always stay open to different experiences. Otherwise, I'd be a tax accountant and I would not be having as much fun with my life. <laughs>